going to start at um, the scripture 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And then it says in verse 15, which is the verse that I that I spoke about on, um, it says, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Having teeth, thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shalt make the hills as chaff. Yes. Amen. Yes. God has made us warriors. Yes. We are warriors. Yes. We are to fight. We are to show the love of God. Hallelujah. And as we worship him, as we praise him, I came expecting this morning. Yes. You come expecting. Yes. We're expecting great things. Yes. God's moving. God's working. Yeah. He's doing Hallelujah. something. Hallelujah. He's doing something in me. He's doing something in you. Glorious. And as we worship him, as we praise him, as we give him all that we have within us, yes. he's going to manifest. He's going to manifest in our presence Hallelujah. and the glory of God will fall in this place. Hallelujah. We speak to nothing so We tell you how to give them a body nation In the name of Jesus We cry to the east and the west We tell you how to hold back the rest of your nation
place, bring my voice to my call. For I say nothing at all, unless we need a cry, only to realize the hand that heals the sick. As my name written on it, you are my refuge and strength. You are my hiding place. Hear my voice when I call. For I say nothing at all, unless we need a cry, only to realize.
good against him. And he won't prosper, no, 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 no.
Amen. Hallelujah.
love the Lord is good. Uh, did you believe that today? Glory, glory, glory. We magnify you today. The Bible. Lord, we glorify you, magnify you today. She is a terrible person. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Magnify you, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. We give you honor. Thanks, Lord. Lord, you're good. You're good to us, Father God. We magnify you. Do you look at the way things appear? Do you react to everything that you hear? <coughs> or if you do, then you'll be controlled by circumstances. But if you'll look to me, if you keep your eye upon me, saying the Lord, you won't be pulled to the left, you won't be pulled to the right, but you'll be pulled towards me and towards my plan and the path that I have for you. For there are many that would try to take you astray and lead you off what I have for you, saith the Lord. So don't go by what's on the left, don't go by what's on the right, don't go by that loud voice. Don't go by the pressure that says you must do it now, you must do it now, you must do it now. But just let me lead you by my spirit. For I'll lead you with peace and not with confusion. My peace will guide you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. The Lord, you're good. Lord, we magnify you. Thank you, Lord. 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 singing I just um, I, I heard these words in my heart and it was that um, many have fought battles and you've lost some and you won some and I just heard the Lord saying just because you lost a battle you did not lose the war Sorry. now dust yourself up Amen. get back up and Amen. keep fighting yes. hallelujah 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 Amen. Good. Good word. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 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 Th
this morning. I heard the word cancer. Okay. I heard the word cancer. And uh, I know Janelle had contacted me about a lady that she was praying for yesterday. I don't, I don't believe that's for that particular lady. I believe it's there, there's somebody here. Uh, either you're concerned uh, that you have it, may have it, or that there's somebody in your family that's very, very close to you that has it. Where are you at? Father, we just come right now, Lord, now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we come against every bit of cancer, every, every indi anything that might indicate that there's cancer, there be cancer in Jesus' name. We command that to go and to leave his body in Jesus' name. Lord, it'll never come back. The afflictions will not come back a second time. You said in your word. So, Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll give you a, I'll give you one of these prayer claws, and uh, you come get that and slip it in his pillow or whatever. All right, whatever you need to do. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good, isn't He? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, let's pray a little bit more. Zimbongushi of Katete, Sakama, Rata, 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 Is that something the doctors have told you? Father, we speak right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We speak in the name of Jesus for this thing to go now. You have to leave her body now in Jesus' name. It has to go from Cecile. You go now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you're affecting a healing and a yes. cure yes. in this body, Father God. That from this moment yes. on, she begins hey, to amend, Father hey, God. Lord. Things turn around. They things Amen. turn around. Yeah. And we come against the fear. We come yeah. against that spirit of fear that would try to make things worse than, yes. than what, it, what it could possibly be. We're speaking a healing and a cure yes. of Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, does anybody remember what we were talking about last week a little bit? Wow. Uh, I got my notes, so I know what I was talking about. <laughs> Remember, we were we were talking about joy, a little bit joy, and we said this: uh, uh, Are you enjoying your salvation? Are you enjoying your salvation? Yes. Yeah. I noticed that you know, Friday when they have the war room, uh, that uh, uh, Miss Kathy, when she comes into our office, she's just glowing. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> just, She's just beaming. So yes, hallelujah. She's been in, in, in battle. And she loves it. Yep. She's enjoying her salvation. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it, there's something wrong if we're not enjoying our salvation. It's, 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 it's that big of a deal. And God gave us salvation. That means that when you die, you're going to go to heaven. Okay. We, we were never meant to live here forever. All right. We're going to kind of have to get that through our heads. And when we're young, we never think about, you know, eternity or things like that. But you get older, sometimes you begin to realize that, uh, uh, you know, there, there is a, an end to all things. But when you have eternity in your soul, you get, you get born again, you get your heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's some joy that's supposed to be in our life. God has provided joy. We could look, took a look into that, and, and uh, we saw that uh, Isaiah 12, verse 3, that we were to draw water from the wells of salvation last week. So God's got joy. I remember Lester Summerall, he said, God doesn't have love. God is love. There's a difference. Yes. Okay? And it's the same with joy. It's not like... God has joy, but he, 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 God is total joy. And, and, you know, we can bring joy to his heart, too. But he wants us to believe it. You say, well, I don't feel very joyful. Uh, you have to understand, said, but there's a difference between happiness and joy. Yeah. Happiness is an outward expression that we have. And, and it's, you know, that happiness is normally conditional. It depends on everything is going right. The wind is blowing in the right direction, and nobody's ruffled your feathers yet, and, and nobody's yeah. messed with all your ducks in a row, and you can be, you know, they didn't de deduct too much from your paycheck or things like that, so you can be reasonably, you know, there's some, some happiness there. But joy is something that is on the inside of us, yeah. and that's where God puts it in. And when you have, when you really have joy on the inside of you, guess what? It'll begin to work its way out too, all right? And so I like to tell the story of uh, Charles Trover. And uh, uh, he was in my first church back in the back in the 1980s, and uh, he was a, a Marine veteran. He had been to Vietnam. He had been in combat. Uh, he had just seen a lot of horrible things, and probably done a lot of horrible things too. And and his wife started coming to church, and she 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 was had got saved and got filled with the Spirit, and, and so he began to watch her. Because he was, he was just dead against Christianity and things like that. But he saw that there was something about her that was different. And then when she got filled with the Spirit, he'd be waiting for her every time she'd come home from church on Sunday morning or Sunday night and say, well, okay, what happened? So he wanted to know what was happening. And uh, so one morning she was getting, he just had dental surgery on Friday, and so his gums were all packed with this pink stuff he had to have all weekend. So she gets up and gets ready for things. And she, he comes out with his suit on. And she says, what are you doing? So I'm going to church with you. <laughs> and so uh, she's thinking, oh, my God. And, you know, he, he hasn't been to church. It's, it's, you know, who can I set by that's not wild? <laughs> who, who can I set by that's just calm? They always behave themselves. And, and she said, no, there's a couple that I know that are uh, oh, set by them. And then when they got there, they were right up in the second row. The front. Oh, wow. And the Spirit of God fell in the surface and the joy hit. And they were up dancing and shouting. And, and uh, she, she thought for sure that, that well, that'd be the last time he'd ever want to come to church. And so on the way out to the car, he, she finally she said to him, she said, well, what did you think about that? He said, that's the way church all Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. And so, but he had a terrible reputation because uh, he was so nasty that when he would go into a store to order parts and things like that, the, 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 the girls that were behind the counter almost would refuse to serve him. He was just so bad and so nasty. And one day they saw him coming in, they have to draw lots, which one's going to go in there and, and wait on him. And, but now he, he came into my office and he received the Lord into his life. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise he God. Comes, and he comes into the store and, and, and they, they, they see there's something, something terribly wrong with him. He's not the same old Charles. And the lady said to him, she said, did you get born again or something? He said, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this Holy Spirit that, that we have, when you get born again, we, you have the, the spirit of joy yeah. on the inside of us. Now, you might not realize it, but it's there. It's just a question of, uh, of recognizing it and yielding to it. Hallelujah. 
you know, this is this this is a, a hard world. You know, there's a uh, a lot of a lot of things that aren't very nice in this world. But you know what? I still got I still have God on the inside, and God is good. Yes. And when life is through, there is a mansion waiting for me. I'm going to go over to Albert's mansion. We're, we're going to barbecue ribs or something like that. But anyway, God is good. And when, when we get that in our heads, that God is good, even though we go through some difficult things, some dark times even, God is still good. And so God has joy for us. And that, that's something that that the world is looking for. And actually, the world thinks something's wrong if you're happy. Yeah. If you're yeah. smiling at them, what would they do? What would they yeah. them? Either they're, either they're stoned or they're Pentecostal. Okay? <laughs> One or the other. We don't know for sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we were told that we would draw water from the wells of salvation. God calls salvation a well, a fixed place to draw that life-giving properties that water has. A well with no water is just a hole in the ground. A well that has no water is just a hole in the ground. And wells are normally dug by people to access the water below, for drinking, for washing, for cooking, for their animals, for irrigation, for crops. And so a well lets you access what is inaccessible in some places. Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, I've got that there's a well that God's got. That, was, that it's a well of, of water springing up for eternal life. <clears throat> Say, I have eternal life. I have eternal life. On the inside of me. Inside of me. See, God puts a, 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 a hunger and a thirst on the inside of each of us, every, every child of God. Every, every person has an empty void that that it can only be filled by God. They try to fill it with drugs and everything else, but they it can only be filled by God. Amen. And when we allow God to fill that part of our lives, then we can begin to change. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I was, you know, uh, when I got saved, it changed me. Okay? It just it just changed my life. And it's fun to change us. Hallelujah. Joy is available to every child of God. We saw that last week. So joy is available. It's up to you if you want to choose it. But they had to take it by faith. They had to drink that spiritual drink of the joy of the Lord that he had provided for them. So we have to use our faith to find joy. But joy is there. It's been deposited into you. It's been deposited into me. And we saw this last week. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 7. We saw this, that that's one of the benefits that, that God has. <clears throat> Peter is, is talking to the Christians, and he says that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than that of gold, that perishes, though it be tested by fire. Anybody been tested by fire? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tested by fire. You know, that, that's not a fun place. No. Okay. But it says tested by fire may be found to praise. And honor. What do, you, what do you do in the fire? What do you do in the trials? Yep. What do you do in the testing? What do you do when everything's gone wrong and nothing seems to be right? What do you do? Put on your praise. Thank you. Either my message, I work alone. <laughs> <laughs> it says that, that your faith may be found to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's go to verse 8, please. Whom having not seen you love. We haven't seen him yet, but we do love him. We talked about that, sang about it today. We love him. Though now you do not see him yet, believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Hallelujah. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We saw that that seems a little bit blind in the King James but uh, in the Passion Translation, it says, uh, in the same verses that we read, but, but these only reveal this uh, sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, or even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise and glory and honor when Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed. You love him passionately, 
though you have not seen him. But, but, through, but through believing in him, you are saturated with that ecstatic joy. Wow. So, so I, I'm just trying to think of how many people do I know that are, have been, have been uh, saturated by ecstatic joy. I need my binoculars today. Just, uh, <laughs> see, right? You know, is there anybody that you've been saturated with this ecstatic joy? Hallelujah. It's there. It's there. Huh? That you are saturated with ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime, and immersed in glory. For you are reaping the harvest of your faith, the full salvation promised you, your soul's victory. And so we said this, that by the Holy Ghost we said last week, while we were speaking, that uh, the, the, the answers that you need is found in your prayers. The, the, the answers are found in your prayers. There's something very similar to that. And uh, so I had an opportunity to put into practice what I was preaching. I never thought of that. That came up by inspiration. I told people to write it down, so I had to ask Pastor Nelly what I said. And so, because I don't know, you know, when things come up out of your spirit, you know, they're not coming out of your head, so I don't, I don't remember them particularly. And so, but I had, a, I had an opportunity to put into practice what I was, I was teaching and preaching. And so, we have to do that. Did you know that we put into practice everything that yeah. we teach? We don't tell you to do something and we don't do it ourselves. If we, we, if we tell you it's good to be a tither, we are tithers. If we tell you not to you know, lie, cheat, steal, we're not going to lie, cheat, steal. I tell people if you come to work for me, well, I would never ask you to do anything wrong, immoral, lie, or anything like that. So we don't, we don't do that. But anyway, so we had the, I had this opportunity, my granddaughter, uh, she'd been going to the Christian school down in uh, Norfolk, Virginia for several years, and uh, every year it just gets more and more expensive. And uh, So I texted her the other day and I said, uh, uh, are you going back to the Christian school? She said, yes, Papa, I am. And a day or two later, she wrote, texted me, she said, I can't go, I can't go. And I said, why? And she wouldn't answer me. And so I, I called her dad and I said, well, what's going on? And he said, well, uh, they raised the tuition again, and uh, uh, this year for just gentlemen to go is $12,000. Wow. And he says, we, we do not have that money at all. And I talked with him. He says, well, you know, we just have to homeschool her. And we don't want to put her in the public school, so uh, we'll homeschool her in that. And I, and I told gentlemen, I said, uh, in, a, in a text, I said, uh, are you still praying in the Holy Ghost? He said, yes, Papa. I said, you just take it up a notch or two now to start praying even more. So we came Tuesday night down here for, for a Tuesday night prayer. And I felt in my heart that uh, just let everybody else pray. All I was going to do is I was just going to praise God. That's all I was going to do for Jennifer in that situation. I was going to praise God. I was just going to praise God for the whole time. I just simply praise God. Remember, in your praise is your answer. And I think it was a day later, two days later, she texted me and said, Papa, I'm going. Papa, I'm going. I said, well, what happened? And she texted me back the letter that the school sent. They, they dropped her tuition from $12,000. They took $9,000 off the top. Hallelujah. See how that, but that, that's, you say, well, God did not do because you're a pastor. And he never does anything because I'm a pastor. People think they do. Oh, God did that. After. No, he does things because you do what the word of God says. That's right. Hallelujah. That's awesome. So these things, you, these things help us. But your answer is oftentimes found in your praise. When you're praising him. The answers can come. Now we were teaching on this Sunday night. If you weren't here, I'd encourage you to get a hold of that teaching too. It says over in Hebrews uh, uh, 3, 7, it says, Today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So we were talking about uh, uh, God's always speaking to us, but we all we don't always like to hear what He has to say to us. And so, but He's not going to tell us things that all the time that we want to hear. But He'll tell us what's good for us. I like what Lester Summerall said: God does not do what's good for you; God only does what's best for you. That's right. So we might do what's good for somebody, but it's not always the best. God always does the best for us. And 
so we need to begin to, uh, we need to get our faith on God, that I trust God no matter what happens. My trust, my faith, my confidence is in Him. No matter what I see, what I feel, no matter what has happened, I can still trust Him, and I know that His Word is still true. I don't understand everything. I don't have all the answers, but I know the one that does, and He just says, trust me. Trust me. And so when you get down to that place that you trust God, you trust His Word, that, that uh, uh, you, the, the joy can come. You know, we might as we might as you know enjoy what we've got here. Amen. 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 Thank you for your excitement. Oh, <laughs> Go with me to Romans four. We're, we're familiar with this one, but it's it's there. So let's take a look at it. Romans four, and I believe it's verse. Uh, Verse 17. That's not it. I, I got it. I got it down. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Where's that at, Albert? You're, or Ian? Where's Ian at? There's our Bible scout. He's probably down in the basement cooling off. <laughs> For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So there's supposed to be some joy in this life, in this in this this walk that we have with God. It can be trying, it can be lots of fire, lots of testing, but but there can be joy. It's not see now the joy that God's got is supernatural. Okay, so say that with me: God's joy, God's joy is supernatural. God's, supernatural. God's love. God's love is supernatural. supernatural. God's peace God is supernatural. supernatural. Everything that God's done for you is supernatural. Amen. And that uh, we need to understand that it's not a natural thing, but it's a supernatural thing. Mm -hmm. And so God's joy, it's a supernatural joy. It's, what does that mean? It says when you shouldn't be joyful, you suddenly find yourself joyful. When circumstances are such against you and, and uh, you know, that, that you should be, you know, just wringing your hands and crying off in the corner someplace, you just, you just, you've got peace in your heart. You're content to know God's in control. Yes. God's taking care of everything. Rick Warren said this. He said, gave the definition of joy. Joy is a settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. Yeah. A quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. It's a determined choice to praise God in every situation. Notice, it's a determined choice to praise God in every situation. And if we don't, if we don't learn to praise Him when everything is, is not right. I shared the story many times about one of the darkest times in my life. I called the pastor, but there is no place for me to go. There is no church, there is no congregation, there is nothing. And I'm stuck in the wilderness. And I, and I have, there's five of us, my wife and, and myself and three children, and I have no more money. I've run out of everything. I have no more options. And the Lord said to me, three words, just worship me. Wow. And I would say, but Lord, you don't understand. Okay. And I would take about a good five to ten minutes to in detail explain what's going on, and then he would say, just worship me. So then I had to repeat yeah. everything over again because I he, heaven didn't understand and right. didn't know. Yeah. See, sometimes we think heaven doesn't know. Oh, heaven doesn't know what I'm going through. Do you know, God, do you even care? Do you even know? Yes, he knows. And he cares. But he said this to me, just worship me. And I did. Finally, I started to do that through the tears. I mean, it was a lot of tears. But see, God was moving in areas I couldn't see nor feel yet. It just looked like it was a black abyss that I was facing. But God had, was behind the scenes. He was working and he was moving and he was setting things up for me. Now I can honestly say this, in, in, in the 50 some years I've been a, as a Christian, God has never failed me. I've buried a wife, I've buried a son, but that's not failure. I'll see them again. 
it would be fattier if I wasn't washing up. That would, that would be the failure. And so there is a, a calm, a peace, a joy that we have knowing God's got everything and still under control. You know, he's, you know we're, we're facing a, 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 just a, a small little problem here, which is just a $5.7 million <laughs> little pimple. Okay. It's just a little thing. But see, God gave us a vision. How's that going to happen? I don't know. But I trust. You know, when we, when we were, when we were here, or we were in the Lutheran church, and, and things, we were there for a couple of years, and, and things really kept getting worse at the Lutheran church. The Lutheran people didn't like us, for one thing. And then they were, had it rented up to four other churches that were all com competing for the same space at the same time. So they wanted us in and out, you know, on a, on a time clock. And the last thing we do is follow a time clock here. Amen. So it's very difficult to follow the Holy Ghost and, and to follow the clock. And so uh, it kept getting worse and worse. And so finally I was talking to Pastor Mark and I said, I said, something's not right. And he said, the grace to be here is lifted. And so, so I said, that's, that, and instantly bore witness, I said, that's right. And so, but we'd been looking for a building, but we couldn't find it. So we'd been looking for a couple of years, okay? couldn't find the building. And so, uh, I like what Jesse's uh, Jesse Duplantis, his wife, they were looking for a building down in New Orleans for a number of years, looking and looking and looking. They, they said, God, why have you hidden that building? He says, I haven't hidden it uh, from you. I've hidden it for you. Yes. And when they found the building, it was beyond their expectations. And so. We, God had, you know, told me, he said, I want you to go back into home meetings. And I said, no, that's not how it should be. See, I'm, I'm telling heaven, now this is how the, the plan ought to go, God. Okay, this is the blueprint. We should move right into a nice building. And God said, no, go back into meetings, home meetings. Well, we had to go back into Flavius home. Okay, they were over on, what, was it Wetmore or someplace over in there? Emerson Court. Somewhere. So we were over in their house. And I said, well, it'll only be a month or two. We were there 11 months, I think, 10, 11 months. Wow. And, uh, but then in time, this all opened up for us. See, God was working all that time. Yes. All that time when you, didn't, when you couldn't feel it, you couldn't see it. We found the building, and then we said we want it, and they said, no, you can't have it. But we said, no, God told us we could have this building. That's right. And they, they said, well, you can't have it. I said, just, well, give it to us. I said, we don't give buildings to people. I said, we'll give you a dollar. They said, we don't take, you can't, we don't do that anymore. They used to give a building for the, a dollar. So after uh, 11 months, they, they approached me and said, okay, make us a reasonable offer for the building and we'll sell it to you. I said, what do you consider a reasonable offer? They said, 100, probably 110,000, we will refuse that. So I said, Lord, what do we offer? He said, offer 55,000, and they took it. So, see, God knows best. Hallelujah. But see, there's, there, there's a confidence that you learn in God. There's a confidence that you, that you have in Him. He's not going to, He doesn't fail. He doesn't fail. And if, if you think He does, uh, you're not getting hearing from heaven. Joy is an inward feeling. Happiness is an outward expression. Joy endures hardship and trials and connects it with meaning and purpose. A person pursues happiness. We choose joy. Happiness is fickle. It requires happy circumstances. Joy, on the other hand, sticks around. It doesn't get chased off by troubles. Jesus said this in John 15. Turn there with me. John 15. John 15. Verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. So God wants you and I to have joy, that a uh, fullness of joy. But he says, I want it, it's good, but it's going to be my joy. It's going to be my joy. 
Now, let's, let's find out a little bit about this joy that Jesus had. Do you have time this morning for that? Yes. Go to Hebrews 1, verse 9, please. Hebrews 1, now we're, we've been here before, looked at it, but again, just because we looked at it in the past doesn't mean we've gleaned all the, the revelation out of these verses. Hallelujah. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, talking about Jesus and lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than anybody else in the whole world. Okay? Now, it's interesting when you look up in, in the Greek, the oil of, of gladness, you find out it's called the oil of exceeding joy. That is the correct term. He was anointed with the oil of exceeding joy. And then he said, now that my joy, I'm leaving it here for you. Hallelujah. Has anybody ever got it yet? Yeah. Have, do you have that exceeding joy? Yeah, yes. well, Kemp has got it. Yeah. Yes. See, it's there. It's there for you. Now go with me to Isaiah 61. We'll start in verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61, verse 1. This is a prophecy concerning Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Okay, well, we found out over in Hebrews 1 8 that he was anointed with the oil of exceeding gladness. All right, so that's the anointing that he has uh, to preach good tidings to the poor. You know, uh, uh, you know, God sends me here not to, to, to preach at you, but to feed you. That's what I do. So I'm, just, I'm just here to feed you, okay? But I don't like what you're eating, okay? No? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we're trying to, you know, wrap it up in, you know, something different, okay? But it's still good stuff if you just eat it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. To preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those that are bound. Verse 2, please. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Okay? Verse 3. To console those to whom <coughs> who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Look at that. Are you mourning about something? Are you mourning today? You know, there's a sadness, there's a heaviness in you. This is what God's done for you. He's already given us the oil of gladness. Hallelujah. Well, how can I be happy? You can. You just let the Lord do it. God can make you happy. Okay? He'll either do three things to you. Either he'll make you mad, he'll make you sad, or he'll make you glad. One of those three things. That's what he did. He'll do that for you. Hallelujah. Let him make you glad. Hallelujah. The, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may call the dry priest of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now let's go to Acts 10.38, something we're very familiar with. Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Well, again, I got to say, I wonder what kind of anointing, what anointing was that that he had? It had to be the oil of gladness. How God anointed uh, uh, Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. Now, it, it says over in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 27, 11, it, it says, uh, a merry heart, uh, I don't know, let me look it up. A merry heart is good like a medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 17, 22. Merry heart. Do a good like a medicine. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Now we are told that he was the, he he had the oil of exceeding joy upon him, and we are his children, we are his offspring, and he left that exceeding joy here with us. Okay? Now it's up to you. Okay? Now it says uh, in uh, go to. Uh, James 5, let's, let's start, I think, in verse 14. See what that one does for us. 
in James 5. Where came it? Is anyone sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over them, anointing, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, the word anointing, whatever we see the, uh, that word anointing, is actually a, a Hebrew word that means to take oil and just rub it in, 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 rub it in. I remember years ago, people said, well, if you ever get a burn, just, you know, take aloe vera. Take an aloe vera plant, just cut off a little piece of it and put that on there. Well, you know, over you know, the course of time, you get a number of little burns and things like that. So I put the aloe vera on, never did a thing for me. And finally, somebody said, you're supposed to rub it in. Yeah, you know, you just, you just don't put a dab on it. You know, you rub it in, you rub it in, you rub it in. You just, and, and so the same, same as with almost all topical uh, uh, ointments, you have to rub them in. If you just lay it on the surface, it's not going to do much. And so the anointing is, is like a hand that's laying on it, and it's just rubbed in. Why? Because it, it's going to get in on the inside of us. Amen. So this oil of joy that God's got is he wants to just rub it in. Okay? Just rub it in into us so that we're so saturated. That's God's plan is to saturate you so that you, you are the, you know, people get, you know, they just, they look at you like, you know, what, what's wrong with you? It's not what's wrong with me, it's what's right with me. Okay? Nothing wrong with me, it's the world that's wrong. Yeah. And, the, you know, the, the Bible simply tells us the world is going to grow darker and darker. But we're going to have to shine brighter and brighter. Arise, shine, for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Upon the earth darkness, but upon thee light. And he grows, grows darkness you know, on the earth and, and grows darkness on the people, but upon thee light. So there is an anointing that God's got for us. And then when you get into Galatians chapter 5, we won't take any time there today, maybe next week. But it talks about the, uh, the works of the flesh or the fruit of the flesh. But it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. And the first thing it says is Galatians 5.22. Why don't we just go there for just a moment. Thank you, Lord. I think it's verse 22. Galatians 5.22. That's Ephesians. That's a good, that's a good sermon right there. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, watch. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the, <laughs> but the fruit of the spirit is love. Use that for miracle man. Now I, I like what Brother Hagen said about this. Now you you don't have to accept it, you know, uh, uh, but at least don't throw it out either. He said the fruit of the spirit is love. The fruit of the spirit is love. That is the fruit of the spirit, and everything else grows off of that. Yes. And so the thing, the first thing with the love of God. See, the, 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 you know, God is love, and the fruit, of, uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love. And that is where you can love everybody. That's unlovely, unlovable. I, there's a love that allows us to love every, every kind of a person, no matter how, how bad they are, how degenerate they are. We, we can still love them with the love of God. Okay? Yes. And there was, a, I remember watching a, a little video that was on, on Facebook here the other day, and, there were some people they, out in Portland, Oregon, they gathered to have an outdoor worship service. Yes. And so they gathered, and, and Antifa, this hate group, the terrorist group, they descended upon Christians, young people worshiping and praising, and they attacked them. Yes. And they, they sprayed mace on them, they stole their microphones, stole their speakers, and they, the, the church, they just dispersed the, the church. Police sat there and did nothing. Right. Do you know what the church did? They came back the next day stronger than ever, more of them all together. Wow. Came and showed up in mass. Oh, and people showed up and they started getting saved. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, They're yeah. leaving to the Lord. In fact, that people had to leave because they couldn't stand it because the people just got to decide they're going to go on. They're just going to let the joy of God, I mean, the joy that they had. And that, that Antifa guy, he just weeping and crying and just coming to the Lord. Being forgiven. Yes. Hallelujah. But the fruit of the Spirit. Years ago, I was teaching along these lines, and it was strawberry season, so I had on a strawberry patch. So I went out and I, I found a strawberry blossom. I found a little, a little nubbin of a strawberry. I found one that was green. 
and a big one that was green, I got one that was partly red, and I had one that was fully red. So I had the whole spectrum, and I, I had them all laid out. I said, which, which one is a strawberry? Which one is a strawberry? They were all strawberries. But fruit takes time to grow. See, fruit, he said, you might think that, well, you know, I just don't have that. Well, let it grow. Yeah. You have to let it grow. Yes. If you let it grow, it'll, it'll grow. You're just not going to walk in there and go, eh, yeah, nothing happened. Not going to happen to you. But over time, over time, you're going you're to realize, man, God is good. God just, he just, just time after time after time. I remember there was a time that, that, that I, I fell away from the Lord. I, I couldn't go to church. I had to work. And this was way back in, in the 70s. And, uh, but I didn't manage to pray. I knew I was black backs the day I heard enough about backs than Christians. I found out I was one for a little bit. And the, the strange thing was I still prayed and God still answered my prayers. Mm. And, yes. and I remember saying, God, how come you did that? I know, I wasn't even trying to live for you. I wasn't even trying to serve you. I just needed this and you'd do it. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads men to repent. Yes. Yes. Not the hardness of God. Yeah. And you realize how good God is, no matter what, is that confident expectation. He's got it in control. Whatever your biggest problem is, God's got it in control. You, let it, you can relax. Did Jesus know there was a storm coming when he got in that boat? Oh, yeah. Did he know that there was a demonic madman on the other side over in the gatherings waiting for him? Oh, yeah, he knew. What did he do? He just went and and decide, oh, I'm going to take a nap. God's got this. It's all in control. There's nothing the devil can throw at me that's going to change me. I say it like this. I, I've gone too far. I'm in too deep. I, I can't turn around anymore. Okay? And so this joy that, that we have, it's down deep on the inside of us. We're all going to face more problems in these last days. The days are going to get darker. But there is coming a move of the Spirit of God. Oh, and God wants you to be a part of it. God wants to use you. And so we're going to have to get some joy. We're going to have to take the joy that's already been given to us. The Bible says stir up the gift that is in you. Stir it up. You, you don't ask God to stir it up. I remember Brother Hagin shared this story. Do we have time for one more story? Before we yes. yeah. He knew a man that... Uh, that uh, he thinks, you know, he, his life was just kind of dull and boring and everything. And, and he'd heard about, you know, uh, getting, stirring up the gifts. So he prayed. He says, God, I need you to stir me up. And so his dog ran off and left and couldn't find the dog. And, and then uh, somebody stole his car. And he's still praying, Lord, stir me up. And then he lost his job. And then his wife started talking about divorce. And, he comes to the conclusion, he said, Lord, don't bother stir me up, I'll stir myself up. <laughs> no, that, we have to stir ourselves. God's not going to stir you up. God won't stir you up. But you have to stir yourself up. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good today. Amen? He is so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Well, uh, Brother Albert, you want to come and help us with the offering this morning? Now, don't forget, tonight is uh, Holy Ghost Night. And uh, the service starts at 6 at 7 p.m. sharp. Uh, Greg is going to be up and he's going to be ministering. And uh, his sister Jennifer, my daughter Jennifer, she's going to be ministering alongside him. They're going to be tag teaming. And uh, Greg says, he said, the Lord's already showed me some things. And he says, it's, it's going to be good. So I believe that. Don't you? It says to honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. You know, through the Bible, the first fruits is always 
taught in every area. You see where it was when the cattle or the livestock were born. The firstborn male was the one that needed to be the first fruit. Well, the same was seen when even when Israel went into the promised land, into the battles. And the first battle they fought was against Jericho. And they were told not to take anything, but that it all belonged unto God. But there was one man who just happened to be, his name was Achan, stole some stuff. And he took it and hid it in his tent, some silver, some gold, a real nice Babylonian garment. And he kept for himself, but when the Israelites went into the next battle, they lost badly. And they turned and run. So they brought all the tribes before the high priest there, and they found out that it was his family. They picked out his family that had done it. And when they found out it was them that had done it, they took them all, they stoned them, him and his entire family, but it was one man that had done it. And then they burned him. You see it again when in uh, Cain and Abel. Now, the Bible says Cain and Abel brought offerings unto God. Now, Abel brought the firstborn of one of his herd, his flock, his livestock. But it says that Cain brought an offering. It doesn't say it was the first fruits. And it wasn't accepted to God. So God wants the first fruits of all of our substance. Amen? And when we do that, it redeems the rest of it. So that when we give it, it's blessed before God. Amen. 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 So anyway, we're just going to pray today for your offer. And, uh, Lord, we thank you, God, that you bless us. Lord God, we honor you, God, in everything that we do, Father God. We acknowledge you in all of our ways, Father God, that you are our creator, you're our provider, you're our healer. God, you're the one who gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory, God. And we thank you for that, God, today. And today we honor you, God, with our increase. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We got the joy in us. Amen. You know, the scripture in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says not to be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, there was a time before I became a Christian, I used to get drunk not on wine probably, but other stuff. <laughs> and it said that you're under the influence. But well, we need to have more of this influence of the yes. Spirit of God in our lives, yes. that our joy is going to be That's so right. full that That's it's going right. to be running over. That's so you right. want all kinds of joy in your life, you just get more of the Holy Ghost in your life. God will fill you with joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. So, Pastor, you already said we got uh, uh, Greg and Jennifer on the big screen tonight. Come and uh, let's see what God will speak to you. Today. Just draw on on the anointing, and uh, perhaps there will be a word for you tonight. Amen. So we have. Tuesday, prayer at 7 o'clock. We have Wednesday, Bible study. They have a war room this week? No. Not this week. So, God bless you. Anybody who needs prayer, I'd be more than happy to pray for you.